I wanted to do a short video with an update on the electrical. Uh, we've got the, the big stuff going in. Uh, still waiting on the power company to do their part, but they gave me the meter can finally. So I got that mounted. So I wanted to take you along and kind of show you what it did. Uh, for starters, one of my biggest problems was how to mount this flat thing on this not flat thing with all these waves. Saw a uh, couple different ways to do it. I ended up going with a uh, unistrut. So it's kind of hard to see right there, but this is just kind of like universal mounting uh, bracketry that uh, you can use to mount electrical equipment or about anything else. So I basically screwed that to the, uh, to the building and I mounted the panels to that. So kind of moving back, you can kind of see a little bit. And I was able to align the bottom holes on a single piece of strut. And then because the cabinets were different heights, I had to do two separate pieces of that. So I used that to mount the cabinets. So this is the meter can. This is a 320 amp dual lug uh, meter that the power company gave me as a part of my uh, installation package. And uh, they basically gave it to me and said, this is for your electrician to, uh, to install. So hi, I'm my electrician. So we put this up. Um, you can see it's got dual lugs and you can see I've got my uh, wires uh, feeding uh, a pair for the house and a pair for the shop. So we got you know, phase one, phase two, and then our neutrals. And the inside goes to the shop. I'll, take, I'll show you that real quick. And you've seen this panel before, now with more wires. So for the inside, what we did is we did what's called a back-to-back -back mounting. So we've got the two inch hole going out to the building and there's a piece of um, two inch PVC conduit connecting the two boxes. Uh, we use the lock ring as well as a, this plastic bushing that's required. And then we've got our conductors coming in. And so, uh, push those back out of the way. Those are coming up and you can see they just go right in the top. So we've got our first phase, our second phase coated red, just so we know what's what, and then our white. Uh, the cable I used, and what I can tell, this is this is code by all my research. I'm certainly not uh, worried about anything burning down. Uh, I use what's called mobile home feeder cable. And those of you who know what that is, they may, you may say, why'd you buy the extra ground? Well, look, it's, it's over there in the floor. This was the cheapest thing I could find. Um, my other options for my local supply house were to go copper, which would have been at least double the cost. Or um, I could have gotten a more expensive four-wire solution, uh, SER cable, that had the extra ground embedded in it as well that I wouldn't use. So this is my cheaper option. This stuff is rated for underground, but it's also marked as dual use. And if we, this is a good example maybe, what you're looking for, pardon my framing, that right there, it says USC2. That means it's underground cable, underground only, and it should not enter the building. The reason for that is because uh, the the material that this PVC jacket is made out of is not uh, properly fire rated. So if you had a fire, it wouldn't resist the fire well enough, etc. So, I mean, you know, metal's metal. It's a four odd aluminum is going to conduct the same as a four odd aluminum, but to meet code, you technically couldn't use it. But the magic words are right here: or RHH, or RHW, or RHW2. Those different designations basically mean that you can use this about anywhere, including into the building, provided it goes in the conduit, which it is here. It's going from, you know, six inches of conduit all the way into the panel, as you can see. Uh, this particular cable came with a 4 aught aluminum for 200 amp service with a 2 uh, you know, step down uh, neutral, which is perfectly fine from what I gather. I'm not an expert on the code. This is my first rodeo. I'm learning along with you. But they sell it like this. It seems very common. The math behind it all makes sense as to why you can downsize the neutral. So I'm comfortable downsizing the neutral. Uh, it also came with a, with a four gauge uh, ground wire, which I will not be using. So I've got four gauge ground wire. Um, side note, what's nice about these new Square D panels is that they come with these plastic um, main lug covers. So if your panel's hot and you got the cover open, this is just another layer of protection to where you don't actually get a screwdriver, you know, in between this and the case, because that would be a very 
bad news. It'd be a bad day. All right, so let's go back outside and let's look at what else we got. So I showed you two wires. Incidentally, the power company, see their flag. They're gonna come up with conduit up in the bottom. They go up and to the top here. So on the meters, the power company always comes in from the top. You come out from the bottom and that is the way of things. So this other panel, why do we have another panel? You just have another panel on the other side. Well, this is the panel that's gonna feed the house. And I didn't wanna do this because it's an extra panel, you know, extra 120 bucks or so, but the power company required it. They said for their rules, and this is not NEC guidelines, that you must have a, for a remote building, which, separate from the, uh, the service entrance, which is what I'm doing with my house, because that's gonna go from there all the way over there, that you have to have a disconnect for that remote building at the point of service. So right by the meter in this case. So what I chose to do to handle that was I got this outdoor panel. It's 200 net panel and it has what's called feed through lugs. So you can see my cables coming up through here, going down. There's an extra neutral tap here. There's a ground tap here. And we got these extra lugs here. And so when we run the cable to the house, we are gonna attach here for our, our hot legs, another for a neutral, and then we'll run our four gauge ground wire to our house, which will now be a sub panel. And this will meet the power company's, sorry, the power company's requirements for the external disconnect. And this was actually cheaper than external disconnect, like the cheapest, just plain disconnect, no frills. This was actually cheaper. So not only do I get a disconnect, but I also get, uh, eight spaces of uh, breakers of breakers for whatever. Um, I don't even know what I'd, what I'd use them for yet, but I've got the options, so that's nice. Um, and it also came with the covers. So that's that's the plan for the main power kind of distribution for the, for the homestead. Um, I'll bring you along as, uh, as it develops, but uh, hope you guys enjoy this, and uh, thank you for watching.